Girls Theme Punk Expo, and I've been following since we got here Girl Genius, which is a, a graphic novel book. We found when we first walked into the dealer room on the day one, and ever since then we've been going to the panels, and I just have to say it's really fantastic. I've not got to read the whole book yet, but uh, where did you guys come up with the idea of Girl Genius? Well, my husband is a comic book artist. He's been a comic book artist for a long, long time, and he did. Uh, he was doing a lot of other work back in the day. He did What's New with Phil and Dixie for Dragon Magazine. He did a science fiction comic called Buck Godot, Zap Gun for Hire, and he did the comic book adaptation of Robert Aspen's Myth Adventures series. And when he was coming to the end of, uh, of the lat latest Buck Godot series that he was doing, he was saying, well, what should I do next? And a friend of ours said, well, you should do something totally new that you've never done before. You know, I mean, don't, don't do any of your old titles again, do something new. And uh, at that time, I because I've always had mad scientists and airships and that kind of thing on the brain, um, I was sketching around with things like that. Um, and he came up with the title Girl Genius, and he came up with the character, Agatha, and he said, he said, oh, I based her on you, and I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. You know, this was back when I was 23, so it was a little more believable. And you know, so we kind of rolled in my love of the mad scientist stuff with, um, with his uh, Girl Genius concept. Um, also at that time, because originally Girl Genius, we had thought, well, we'll make it a near future thing. And then we thought, well, that's kind of boring. Um, I was looking through all of his sketches and I was thinking, well, look at all these great sketches and drawings that you've been doing since the late 70s. And, you know, these, these fat little dirigibles and, and cats and top hats and little monocles and, and all this stuff that you would look at and say, oh, steampunk, or, or at least, you know, kind of Victorian influence, um, whatever. And, you know, we both really loved that sort of thing. Um, it, it was the sort of stuff when, when we were working on Magic the Gathering for, for Wizards of the Coast, we would, you know, go around with our friends to, uh, this was back when we were we were fairly well-paid artists, and, you know, what did we do with the money? Did we put it away for, for you know, a rainy day? No, we bought Victorian furniture. And <laughs> so, so then we were surrounded by this, and we said, well, you know, we should we should make it all kind of, kind of Jules Verne, you know, um, more, more age of enlightenment, uh, or you know, an industrial revolution that that time range, and, and make it kind of that would be really fun visually, and it would let us do all this stuff that I'm seeing in, in Phil's artwork already, but that never makes it into his print work because his print work was always either high fantasy or, or science fiction. So it, it gave us a chance to do something that at that time we thought was pretty, you know, different and interesting and, and special, and we still think it's pretty interesting and special. But you know, looking around here. It's not as different. <laughs> so. Now, how long has the um, whole genius story been going on? When did you guys create it? Well, we started working on it in 1990, but back then we were still working on uh, Magic the Gathering cards and doing a lot of other outside work. Uh, we didn't start actually putting it into print until 2001, I mean, like January 2001 is when we published the first thing. And that actually gave us a long time to sit down and come up with the story and figure out the, the general overall story of where we're, we're going with this, which is actually really nice because it's half the work done. Uh, we still have to do fiddly detail work as we, as we move from point to point, especially as we um, look at the way the story is being told and we question things, you know, we start getting into like, but why would they do that? And then, oh, well, you know, that, that opens a whole new can of worms, but, you know, that's actually the fun part of writing, is being able to, to figure things out. It's like it's like a constant puzzle, so uh, we're really enjoying that. It seems like a lot of fun, and your characters are a lot of fun. <laughs> From that radio show, we were laughing. Uh, tell us who your favorite character has been so far. Oh. I have lots of favorite characters depending on who I'm writing at the time. I mean, you know, obviously we love the main character, and that's but that's what you expect someone to say. Uh, I'm very fond of um, of Klaus Wolfenbach, who is the Baron, who has uh, he's the mad scientist who has managed to yes he has he has conquered Europa and he is ruling the world and or at least the known world and and there he is yeah. 
and, and it, it maybe isn't that great, but you know, he's, by golly, he's done it, and uh, he is a wonderful character to write because technically, yeah, he's he's the villain. He's in opposition to our main character, but you know, the minute you start really thinking about what you're writing, you start asking. I mean, it's really easy to say, okay, the villain is all boo ha ha ha, I'm so evil, but you think, why? What? Why? What is this person thinking? And that's where the writing gets interesting. Oh, you got me even more wanting to go through and read this. I love villains. I like well thought out villains. So, um, which of the books do you usually recommend right away? The first one. Oh, certainly the first one. The first one. The first one. It's a it's a long form story. So. Um, if you're going to read it, it's good to start at the beginning because otherwise, if you start in the middle, you'll be like, "Who are these people? What?" <laughs> it's definitely um, an ongoing. That's why when we're doing the novels, which you know, we, we actually also have a prose novel that came out in January, and it's been doing very well for us. And the soft cover is due out this summer, uh, and that's from Nightshade Books. It's uh, doing the novels again. It's it's like a series, you know. You need to start at the beginning and read through. When we um, we do try to build in jumping on points, but it's really best to start. That's a little off. We call them save points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many books are out right now? We just got volume 10, and that's this down here. Uh, volume 10 of the comic just came out at this show. And in fact, you can't get it in stores or on our website just yet, because the shipment hasn't actually made it to stores or our house just yet. But uh, when the shipment makes it to our studio and to the, the distributor, um, which will be a couple of weeks, then it'll be available in stores. Now, you can also read these comics online. Yes, it is all free to read online at girlgeniusonline.com. So, or, or girlgenius.net if you want to write less. So, uh, but you know, all you have to do is Google Girl Genius and we pop right up. Now, what's in the lead for the people to be able to get their hands on? Is everything in book 10 already on the web? Absolutely. And in fact, uh, we're most of the way through what will be volume 11. So actually, when you if you follow it online, you're ahead of the books. <laughs> so the books, the hard copies are wonderful. The colors, we've been looking at these things. The print is really well done. Thank you. So anyone who's into collecting good uh, mangas, uh, graphic novels, pick up the actual hard books and look through these and see if it would be something of your interest as well. And instead of just going online, I've always been a fan of holding the books I'm reading. I also like to actually buy the books. And they are available on Amazon. They're available at most of the large bookstores. Uh, they're available on our website. Uh, but, you know, I do actually, um, I do recommend that people look at it online first. And that way, if they decide they don't like it or it's not for them, they're not out anything. And it's, you know, maybe their friends will like it. <laughs> so. Oh, is this your first World Theme Expo? Oh, no, I was here last year. You were here last year, okay. I figured we should say something about the convention. What do you think of the World Theme Expo? Well, obviously I like it since I came back. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, I really enjoy it. I, I have not been to a bad steampunk convention. Okay. I have had a good time at every single one I've been to, and there's a lot of good ones, and there's more coming up all the time. Uh, this has been a blast. Okay. It's, a, it's a good group of people. Everyone's all well dressed and polite, and it's fabulous. <laughs> Yes. And thank you so much. Uh, hope you see your next year because I definitely will be back. And hopefully by that time I'll actually save up some money when I'm going. <laughs> but I'm going to be trying to read this online and get time to catch up. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll see everybody else in our next interview here at Cowabunga Corner.